Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here at this session. I am uh, Stefano De Panfilis. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Fire Foundation. And I'm going to talk about Fireware as a system of APIs that uh, allows and support the uh, digitalization and the construction of this. So <clears throat> I hope to be at the level of the, the amazing presentation of earlier this afternoon because they were really very great. I hope you enjoyed. And I think I will make some reference to those presentations as well during my commenting some of the issues we are discussing. So this is a set of statements that um, uh, certainly are uh, important, and I, I guess we all agree on them, uh, starting from the fact that uh, a competitive economy, particularly these days, that apparently there are uh, issues on the, the, the our European economy is a must. The data is the full for this, the growth and the evolution of our economy, the whole level you use them, not only uh, at the level of selling, but at the level of really also uh, when you talk about machine to machine, for instance, or these things, so they are there, and then the machine they talk because of the data. And produce value and use uh, technologies, all of this in order to implement smart systems. We all say, we speak about smart systems, about what we mean for smart system. Is it just a matter of uh, appearance? Is it a matter of dressing? Well, today I'm very formal dressed. I'm smart, I'm not. What? Or this guy. Does this guy smart? Of course. Maybe he knows that he's washing his car under a thunderstorm. But can we say it's really it's not smart? It's very difficult. It's very difficult to, to judge from things when the information is not complete. So what is important is to understand the context. So context matters. This is the key element for understanding and for being smart. So this is our definition of smart, so be able to react about what is the context around us. And at the end of the day, what we are asking to the ICT systems to do is nothing different than what we human beings do every day. Whatever thing we do, when we exit from home in the morning, we check the weather, this is what it is. It's checking the context. So we absorb information about that and then we react in a way, we dress in a, in a way or in another according to what is the context around. Perhaps today I didn't dress properly because it's really hot. <laughs> I'm really, really very hot on that. So anyway, uh, this is what we want to do and this is something not different from what is normal. But for us, <coughs> what does it mean? It means collecting information about the elements of interest around us. This is a very easy example about uh, smart cities, or uh, let's say about cities. So information could be about entities like uh, shop or citizen or bus, and because of such entities also some, some attributes that we can evaluate. This is what constitutes an information model of the context we want to elaborate. But what is important is not only to collect information, but also being able to provide this information and to collect this information at real time, but even more important, to provide them at the right time. I don't care if there was a traffic accident yesterday. I care if this is today, if I have to pass to that road. So this is what is important, no? And this is an element of discussion when we see most of the data sets we were discussing, whether these are too much static. So it's important information is given at the right time of making such decisions. Sorry, I push. Um, it, this is an example of uh, 
a smart city application <coughs> light. This is uh, Vienna. In this application, you have, um, I think, let me see whether I can go there. Yes, it's working. It's an application, it's a system where there are some uh, real-time data there. And uh, you can see data about, uh, I don't know, public transportation. What is interesting is that, of course, you may open this. Wait, it's not good. Yes, you can uh, put data together with other information, I don't know. Uh, yes, you don't see this? This is what I was showing. You don't. Ah, no, you don't see the menu. No, I was looking for. Uh, well, anyway, the, uh, here there are. Um, I don't know whether this shows. No, well. Okay, archaeological foundations. So, so many. Well, no, this doesn't show. I don't know why. Well, uh, I see my <laughs> screen. Sorry about that. Anyway, you can put on top of this information other information that you want to to see in order to put together information coming from different different sources. Um, anyway, you can. These slides uh, we leave. Uh, we leave. They are public, so you can you can see them and, and enjoy. So, but the issue is that often this information are provided in, uh, and this is what uh, we were discussing even before, uh, were provided in silos. This was also highlighted this morning, well, earlier this afternoon by Dieter. And this is an issue. So we have maybe in each of the department, even sometimes of the same organization, information that are, and systems that are smart per se, but they don't talk to each other. And this is one of the problems that we would like to solve. So what if there were a standard API for accessing context information? An example. Um, here we have three different cities that implemented a smart parking solution uh, using different uh, leveraging, sorry, on different investments. The investment, for instance, in uh, the city of Porto, they use sensor in the ground. In Santander, they have uh, uh, cameras. In Ancona, they were using uh, parkimeters. What is interesting is that the model behind, whatever is the information that you get, in this case, real time, is the same. This means that the application in Porto, in principle, can work also in, 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 uh, in Ancona and the other way around. And actually, this worked because this was an experiment and a uh, and a quite nice system implemented with HERE. So, but this was possible, why? Because the city, they agreed. <laughs> the city, they agreed to use the same APIs and the same information model behind. So, so this is important, but of course, as a certain cause a need of understanding all of these aspects. So there are benefits. Other benefits, we w it was nicely discussed also um, <coughs> earlier uh, with a presentation from the French Minister of Agriculture. There are aspects about this, the, the, the sacred data or the data that has a value on top of which you can create uh, an economy of data. So again, you can mix public data with proprietary data and on top of this create value. Again, this can be done through the adoption of a common, a common API. <coughs> and Fiverr is exactly, uh, was born in order to, <coughs> to, to talk with this, to address this uh, 
aspect of simplifying the implementation of smart applications. And since the very beginning, we use uh, APIs. Since the very beginning, um, this back 2011. Because the, 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 the idea was to give to developers, but in particular to people, not necessarily ICT experts, a certain number of mechanisms through which simplify the implementation of smart applications. Not being, of course, this is always the dream, no? not to provide things, not to ask. But if you think that, and I will see you, that context management, I will show you context management and other technologies, they somehow cover very complicated aspects like, uh, I don't know, security access, like uh, IoT uh, uh, connection and so on, this, this simplified the life. So the APIs was, uh, open APIs in particular, was uh, uh, a characteristic of our since the very beginning. Then <coughs> we, uh, uh, this approach was also to not to reinvent the wheel, but to use as much as possible existing standards or even evolving existing standards. And this was the NGSI standard for context management, which is a standard which was born into the GSMA association and was taken on board by us. Now is uh, on board of uh, Etsy. It became NGSI LD. This is an, a new evolution of GSI, so NGSI linked data that is based on uh, uh, implement is implemented through JSON LD. Um, all of these technologies are, uh, anyhow, are, are offered through uh, open source software as well. With this, the aim and the idea, but this is also easy to see, we have a standard approach to different data models that, of course, need to be somehow wrapped in a, an information model that is common. This way, even the application, they need to be changed. The various silence per, silos per se, they stay. What it doesn't stay is the fact that they can interact because there is a standard layer that allows exactly this interoperation because they decided each of them, because of certain reason, to share their models and to create a common information model that can be done. So what is important is not only that you have <coughs> a standard uh, APIs, but also that there is a recognized data model behind that can be used, because otherwise the APIs per se, uh, they don't say anything. Unless they are semantically characterized, but okay, we can go <laughs> into main other direction. Um, Fireware is not only the context broker, I will tell you why it's blue, not only because it's the core, but also there are some other technologies that allow <coughs> you exactly, as I said before, the aim of building um, smart systems. So there are technologies for interface to third-party system IoT, technologies for context uh, uh, analysis, uh, data visualization, and so on. There are technologies for the monetization of the, the data, but also, of course, the secure access to the data. Because this is something that also was discussed earlier. Sometimes it happens that even in the same data set, there are data that can be open, and maybe there are other data that I don't want to open, but this is the same data set. So shall I create different APIs or shall I use a mechanism, again, standard based on OAuth that allows me to tokenize the data and access the data, allows in the access to the data to the people that can access those data, the application that can access those? This is exactly what this kind of information is used for. It is blue because, as Dieter said earlier today, ah, you don't see this now. Why? <laughs> Before you were seeing this? Oh, no. Uh, I don't know how to. Sh oh. 
to do that? Let's see how much we know. Banana is blue? Yes. It's carrot. Okay, now you can see. Um, <coughs> because the context broker has been uh, selected by the European Commission by its initiative, in its initiative CEF, that is Connecting European Facility, for um, mm, as one of the, the building blocks to be used by public administration in order to build uh, applications uh, that are cross-border and that select a certain, certain uh, uh, element. There are some, uh, the building blocks at the moment are eight. So these are the current building blocks that you will find. And uh, also <coughs> for each building block, but of course content broker, you have also some success stories here. We publish success stories every month of the use of uh, the context broker by, by various, uh, okay, these are all by various uh, uh, cities and districts. So, so uh, this portal is quite interesting because of course they give you access to the technologies, to the supporting services in order to facilitate the adoption of these uh, components, uh, documentation, the software and whatever is, is there. Let me come back to the presentation. <coughs> and uh, using the various components of, uh, of uh, Fiware, you can build uh, uh, reference architectures for various, uh, various domains because the, the, comp the components of Fiware, they are independent mm -hmm. from uh, a domain point of view. So in this case, uh, this is uh, a reference for a smart solution in general. Um, but what characterizes, at the end of the day, your architecture is the data model that is implemented in, in the context broker. Um, bit about what it is. So, I said before, I gave you a bit glance of this, so uh, you have to define uh, entities and attributes against which you want to uh, take me measure and values. There are some interesting aspects here. Uh, the, the context broker is a set of APIs. There are about 50 that allows to do to many several operations, including not only of feeding data and retrieving data and update data, you will see this, but also to create your data model itself. Because of course at this moment, maybe you are interested in bus with these uh, four attributes, but maybe at a certain point you want to add another attribute, for instance, if the bus is propelled with the gas or is electric or is whatever. You can continuously add new attributes because it's our knowledge. Our knowledge grows every day. So you can continuously add attributes or entities or whatever. Of course, per se, the context broker stores information at the moment because the content is what the content is around. And there are technology, of course, for streaming the data. So, first of all, you have to define the model and there are the two APIs, you do this. Then you can feed uh, or even retrieve the, the, the information. What is interesting that I showed you before, uh, there's an example of the of the parking system is that the information can come from different sources. At the end of the day, in the context, what you are interested in is the temperature. But if the temperature is given because a tweet of a person or because uh, a sensor or because uh, something else, this is somehow irrelevant or even if more, is more relevant because it's more interesting because you can manage heterogeneous sources. And also, you can be notified so about an event that happens, and you can set up rules also enough complicated. And also, you can change the values of certain attribute of a certain entity. And if this, the context broker here is connected with uh, through IoT, through the device, through IoT systems, of course, the lamp is switched on or switched off. So you can do 
also actions on top of in changing the context. So, okay, this I already said that the concept work is part of this very important initiative. But also we are uh, discussing with other, we as Fiverr, we are discussing with other standardization. I already talked about Etsy and the fact that that uh, Fiverr and GSI is now on board of the Etsy and it became NGSI LD, it's a standard published uh, last year, 457 pages of standards, so quite extensive. We work uh, together with NIST and PM Forum in order to set up initiatives that are important in order to work on at the level of data models. In particular with PM Forum, there is an in a joint initiative between Fiverr and PM Forum with cities that uh, in a very pragmatic way, they meet and discuss about the creation from bottom of these uh, data models and the way they have to defi be defined. Um, we, uh, the Fire Foundation is, was born in 2016 in order to support uh, uh, the, the fiber technology, the evolution and the, and the, the evolution and the <coughs> Uh, support uh, adoption on, on uh, in the world. We are a non-for-profit organization and um, established in uh, Germany, non-for-profit charitable organization. These are the current members. So it's interesting to say that we have several members supporting and making the community quite large. And we have an estimation of uh, more than 8,000 uh, people uh, being as part of the, the, the ecosystem, which are the people interested in using Fiverr uh, and which are not members. Members mean governing what is the Fiverr community, where Fiverr will go and should go. And of course, if you want to talk and you want to meet the community, this would be a nice opportunity in uh, one month in Berlin. Uh, 23, 24 October, we have the Fiverr Global Summit. This is co-located with another important element, uh, event, that is the Smart Country Convention, that is, in fact, co-located in the same place at the same time, where, uh, which is uh, an event about uh, adoption of ICT technologies at the uh, overall level. So, um, thank you. This is it. Thank you very much, Stefano. <laughs> Questions from the room? Mm, yes. So, um, sorry, Stefano, maybe I should know this, but uh, I'm, I'm asking. Um, it seems that the uh, fiber is connected to the IoT uh, world universe, right? So does it cover, or is, is, is it going to other domains as well? Or it is restricted to these smart sensors, smart cities, and so on? So I, I don't understand which is, if it is limited to a particular domain, or if it is, if it can be used for other domains as well in a transparent way, let's say. Yes. No, no, no. Thank you for the question, uh, Lorenzino. That is uh, crucial, uh, maybe, well. I didn't explain well. For sure, the, okay, we have the, 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 the context information management layer, so the context broker at the core. How to feed information there? That can be feed real time by system directly connected to it through some other components that Fiverr provides. Actually, we are even uh, creating something more. So we are, uh, uh, there are some vendors of devices who embed in their device NGSI uh, APIs so that they connect directly to the context broker. And we certify those devices, and this is the IoT part. But of course, you can talk with other uh, systems. I said before the example of the, the Twitter, of course, this is another system somehow, but also there can be other legacy system belonging to the same organization, to other organization, to other organizations providing some information. Of course, in this case, we have to wrap. Maybe those systems here, those legacies, they have their own gathering information from IoT system, like, I don't know, another traffic control system and so, but 
Okay, this is a matter of uh, dialogue. What is important at the end is that what you share is, they share is the same, the same information model. So the heterogeneous approach is uh, what is important. And what is the, the, the important aspect? It's like, as I said at the beginning, maybe you were not here, when I was saying the, the thing is that we as human beings, we work the same way, we have five senses, we have not just one sense. And we merge information coming from the five senses in our brain. This is the same. In this case, we have not just one sense, IoT, but many others, depending on the way you want to feed, and of course, the way you want to provide this information. Because again, you can interact with the context broker in different ways. Thank you for the question. Thank you very much, Stefano. Um, thank you. Uh, and now after, thank you. After the software part, back to citizens' empowerment.